Patty Van Jiri's love affair with glass began early on. Watching and learning from her mother Emily, also an accomplished glass artist. Then in 1988, together they opened the Glass Gallery in Nutley, New Jersey, as a way to explore and teach the locals about glass. With the loving care of Patty and her mother, the Glass Gallery has grown into a place of art and learning. Patty not only restores and creates exquisite mosaics, but over the last two decades, she has passed on her knowledge and love of glass to over 500 students. Patty invited me to her fabulous store to learn more about the exquisite art of stained glass mosaics. We're here with Patty Van Jerry, who is a glass mosaic artist, a stained glass artist, and the owner of the Glass Gallery, which we are sitting in in Nutley, New Jersey. So tell me, Patty, how did you get started with this art? Uh, basically, when I was a teenager, my mother had began in the craft. My aunt got her involved, and I always loved glass. I always, you know, loved picking it up like scraps of it when I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. sea glass and all that kind of thing. It always just, you know, attracted me. The color, you know, and uh, just the material of it in and of itself is fascinating. Now tell me about the, the glass factory here, what you do, classes you might offer. We've been here for 21 years in Nutley and uh, basically what I do is uh, I'm a commissioned artist so I do uh, custom work for people. We have workshops right here three times a week. We have a lot of fun and, uh, and I teach classes. We've had probably over 500 people come here through these doors over, over the past 21 years. Wow. How about restorations? You also do that, right? Yes, we do. We do a lot of uh, restorative and repair, um, sometimes resurrections. <laughs> when they're a little too far gone, you can really bring anything back. But, you know, I, I like to save the old stuff. Now, of all of the mediums, of all of the things in art, why did you choose glass? I or did it choose you? Maybe? Well, it, a little bit of both, I think. Um, I just, I love glass. I love how light interacts with glass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether light's reflected on it or transmitted through it. I love, obviously, if I'm doing something for a home where it's becoming a part of a home's history. You know, I just, uh, I just love the material. Well, wonderful. I, I, you're a good teacher, and I hear today I'm going to be getting a lesson myself. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to that and taking a closer look at some of your pieces. Absolutely. Patty is an accomplished glass mosaic artist. She creates gorgeous pieces from stained glass lamps to mirrors, windows, and other decorative pieces. Patty agreed to teach me a simple mosaic sun catcher, also demonstrating her process. The first step in creating a glass mosaic is to map the design on paper. The entire design is broken down into different numbered pieces, much like a jigsaw puzzle. So tell me, where do we start? Okay, generally when you start to do the process, you want to start out with a pattern. Okay. And, um, as you see here, we have two identical patterns. And basically to do that, the reason why you have two of them is because one you're going to cut apart and use for your glass cutting. Okay, and the other like one a template? Gonna, exactly. Okay. And the other one you're going to keep whole as a template, sort of like a blueprint, so you could kind of reassemble your puzzle back together on. Ah, uh, now what do the numbers have to do with? They're not like paint by numbers? No, not at all, not at all. What you're going to do, uh, you want to number the patterns identically, obviously, because when you cut the one apart to use for your glass cutting, mm -hmm. later on when you're working with something, you're going to want to know the location of all those numbers when they're all, you know, Gotcha. Spread out in individual patterns. Okay, so now what would be the first step once we've decided our pattern? We would first cut up our pattern. Okay. Each ready. individual piece? Yep, so we're going to take a regular scissor okay. to do that. That's your regular scissor there. Yeah. And we're going to cut around, and we're just going to cut to the inside of that black line. Now when we're doing your inside part, yeah. we're going to grab the foil shears 
which are these ones here. Yes, if you notice, there's a little gap there, a little double-sided oh, gap yeah, there on the bottom, and that's going to allow that. for the growth of your copper foil later on. Okay. Next, using the numbered paper pieces as templates, glass is carefully cut into similar shapes. When done with precision, these cut pieces will fit perfectly with the larger hole. All right, Patty, so we've started with this that you've mapped out. This is the pattern. We use two different types of scissors to cut out each individual piece. So now what's the next step? Okay, so basically after we get done cutting apart our pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to choose our glass. Ooh. So you would go and choose whatever colors that you wanted. Okay. It's totally artistic freedom. So we're going to glue our pieces down. Okay. So we can do some glass cutting. So we've got these big giant sheets and obviously yeah. they need to be made into all of these different shapes. Yeah, exactly. So we'll cut them. smaller so you can handle it. It's got the total chills. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to glue your piece down. Okay, you're going to glue so the piece gonna, of paper right onto the glass. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to get you a little bit of glue. Okay. You just follow kind of what I do. Just a little bit. It's going to be enough for you. Sure. This is a glass cutter. You have okay. one that looks a little differently. It's a little more comfortable for your hand. Basically, when you do a glass score, um, the score is just really basically a superficial scratch in the surface of the glass and that's going to enable the brake to run along it. And you want to start at the edge of your glass, try and navigate as close as you can to the edge of that paper while pressing down, nice steady pressure. So you'd want to grab the glass at the edge, pointing your two thumbs in like so. Right. And just kind of roll. And pull away. Ah, you made that look very easy. Sort of like you're breaking a, a Hershey bar, a piece of chocolate off. Okay, Hershey I've bar. got some experience with that. There you go. Huzzah. I want to pull away a little bit more next time, and you did really great. There we go. Oh, this looks so nice. I love the colors. Oh Beautiful. So now what's the next step? Next we would be putting copper foil around every piece and the reason why you want to put copper foil around everything is because when you do the following step, mm -hmm. the soldering, solder is not going to bond two pieces of glass together. So gotcha. you have to wrap them in some sort of a metal medium. Right, so now we've gone through and put the copper, is it copper foil? Copper foil, yeah. Copper foil along each piece and then we'll piece it together. What this does is actually bonds the pieces of glass together. Yeah, it creates it creates a, a perimeter around there so the solder could stick onto another metal being the copper foil tape. All right, great. So now let's just put this puzzle together Okay. and then we'll be on to the next step. The next step is to solder the pieces together so that the mosaic is an integrated whole. Soldering is a process of joining together two metal pieces by melting a filler into the joint. The copper around the glass acts as a metal glue when soldered and attaches the pieces together. Before soldering, Patty explains that it is necessary to brush the piece with a flux solution which enables the process of metal bonding. All right, now you've put that flux solution on, right. and now you have this 50-50. Okay. We're going to pick up our solder, basically, and just maybe unravel about eight inches or so. Okay. It's a one-pound roll. And we're going to hold our soldering irons. Again, I'm a lefty. And for right now, what we're going to do is we're just kind of temporarily going to hold our pieces together at each of the intersections so they don't shift around as we're soldering. Right. So we're going to do a step called tack soldering. Should I go right here in the middle? Yes, you can. Just slap it down, take your... Ooh! There you go. Wow! 
Wow! That is All amazing. Right, don't oh, panic. I'm stuck. Don't pull it. Just apply the heat from your soldering iron back there and take your solder away. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Great. Right now, Patty, we are one step closer. We've done all of the tacking and then the beadwork. You've actually added a couple of hooks that you could put a chain and then hang this in a window. Now, the final step we're going to do is adding a patina. Right. Um, so tell me about that and why you would do that step. Um, patining is actually just a step that you would do to antique this. Mm -hmm. You could really very much, if uh, if you like uh, the silver, the color of solder, you could keep it the silver color and then just polish it. But the uh, different colors of patina create a little interest, make colors pop. We're just going to wet a small portion of our rag. And is it an immediate effect exactly. that you can see? Exactly. So you oh, look at that! Colors pop right out. It's like magic. All right, so now here is our finished piece being displayed beautifully here at the Glass Gallery. What do you think? I think we did a great job. Good team. So if you want to do something like this, come to Nutley to the Glass Gallery, and you can make your very own stained glass window. The Glass Gallery opened its doors in the late 80s, and since then, it has almost become an aesthetic landmark in the quaint community of Nutley. Patty's Little Shop has weathered many economic tumults, mainly because of her undying dedication to her art and her sincere commitment to teaching and passing on the beautiful tradition of stained glass mosaics.